Hey folks, Timbo here. Kind of a gray raw spring day here in the CNY. <clears throat> they say that April is the cruelest month, but March usually sucks here too. They'd much rather have snow. This is when I get cold. It's 43 and rainy. And it is damp, and that damp gets into your bones. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. But I'm just on my way out. Pick up some essentials pick up a pizza and uh, just wanted to come live and talk to you you know this isn't live because Facebook won't let me go live because they found a picture in 2015 they didn't agree with and uh, five years later it was July 2015 so almost five years later they decide they're gonna say I can't go live for 30 days because they didn't like a picture I posted five years ago now five years ago they didn't have a problem with it Four years ago, they didn't have a problem with it. Three, two, one year ago. No problem. This year, they got problems. Why? Well, I told a little truth the other day. You know, looks like, you know, this is our new flu and pneumonia season. Our new cold and flu season procedure is going to be to uh, everybody scurrying in their houses. And, uh, Bathe yourself regularly, at least five times an hour. Head to toe now. Get in the, get in the scalp, get in your ears, get up your nostrils. You gotta bathe in that hand sanitizer. And I uh, can't go near anybody, because somebody might know somebody that might know somebody that's older, or that has weakened lung function. Well, I can understand it. Because even though we don't give a damn that 25,000 people a year die on the road in car accidents, uh, it's, it's good that we care about an average of 50,000 people a year dying from flu and pneumonia. Because that's what this is all about. You know, people are dying of flu and pneumonia. They might tell you it's this fancy China virus. But these people, as sad as it is to say, they would have died anyway. 90% of the people that have died in the United States from COVID-19 have had comorbid infections with, you guessed it, flu and pneumonia. This is a mild respiratory virus. How mild is it? Rand Paul, who has a legitimate reason to be concerned because he had to have a lumpectomy or a, a, a lobectomy last year, not a lumpectomy, lobectomy, after that psychotic, TDS-ridden Democrat neighbor of his tackled him from behind, broke his ribs, and his ribs punctured his lungs, Rand had to have one lobe of his lungs removed. Rand is in a what we call a high-risk population. Rand tested positive for the virus. How did Rand know to get tested for the virus? Because he came in contact with somebody that was tested for the virus. Rand didn't have any symptoms. Rand didn't experience any dry cough, no, no fever at all, much less a high fever. Completely asymptomatic. And yet, he tested positive. Now, did he get one of those false positive tests that China gave out? Why would China give out false positive tests? People, it's all a hoax. This is all hype. The denominator they're using for all these CFR calculations, the case fatality rate, are dramatically overinflated because they don't know what the numerator is. New York is, you know, we're reporting 50,000 cases now, 53,000 cases. In the United States, it's probably 530,000. Okay, making that fatality rate in order of magnitude too large, at least. This is not a super killer bug. I love y'all. I wouldn't be telling you this is no big deal if this were a big deal. As I said on the Dr. Cody show last week, if this were H5N1, which is the avian flu that's now uh, infecting chickens in China, I just had to slaughter tens of thousands of chickens because of the H5N1 outbreak there. 
If that had hybridized with this SARS-CoV-2 to make a highly contagious H5N1, I would want all of this and more because that would be a killer bug. 60% fatality rate plus highly contagious. That's the kind of bug we should be worried about. This right here is an hysterical hyper overreaction. What disappoints me the most isn't to see the media using this to try to take down Trump. That's what they do. They've got nothing left in their political bag of tricks. It's not seeing how the easily scared Democrats, because remember, everybody that votes Democrat either has their snout in the trough or they're people that react emotionally, not logically. People who don't do facts. People who think with their limbic system instead of their cerebral cortex for all my fellow neuroscientists out there. People who think with their emotions. People who are all about the feels. One of the first things you learn when you study science, and yes, I did get an A in biostatistics, so I know what I'm talking about with all these numbers, how they're calculated, uh, what the values mean in terms of setting policy. One of the first things you learn is that data is just data. Unorganized data is nothing. Data needs to be organized in order to provide you with information. But once you have information, that's not the end of it. Information needs to be organized so that you have knowledge. That's still not the end of it when it comes to setting policy. Knowledge needs to be organized and contextualized, meaning put into context, to give you wisdom. Wisdom is knowing whether to use the knowledge you have or when, if you decide you do want to use the knowledge you've acquired, when do you use it? Well, I've pretty much, except for going on Doug Ducote's show and some posts here and there, I've been quiet on my uh, Patriot Uprising channel because uh, I just wanted to let this whole thing play out. But the numbers are bearing me out. The longer time goes on and the more data that we collect, the more data that we organize into information, we can organize that information into knowledge. And it's all just proven Timbo right. I would not have led you down the garden path if this were a serious virus. My mother is 84 years old and has lung cancer. My sister is immunocompromised from chemo and radiation from breast cancer. I don't toy with their lives. This virus does not scare me with regard to them. Flu and pneumonia does. So, basically just practice good kindergarten hygiene. We should be doing no more than what we do every year, or should be doing every year. Wash your hands, keep your fingers out of your nose and your mouth. And for the love of all that is holy, people, don't be licking toilet seats.